This is a slow-growing soft tissue mass near the knee in a 46-year-old male. At low power, this tumor is composed of two distinct areas. One that is more blue and cellular, the other more pink and hypocellular. The more cellular areas are composed of spindle cells in a world to vesicular arrangement. However, the most striking feature is how they tend to clump up or line up with alternating areas of acellular collagen. Moving to higher power, there is some variability in the size of these spindle cells and a little bit of the shape. Some are a little larger and plumper, while others are smaller and thinner, but they all have the same nuclear features, which is this powdery chromatin and central punctate nucleolus. You can also appreciate in many of these cells that they are tapered on one end. For instance, this end is more tapered and this end is more blunt. Moving to the more hypocellular areas, these same cells are present, but they're being dissected by this extracellular edematous myxoid material. Also in these areas are dilated thin-walled vessels with this pink homogenous rim, which is called hyalinization. Lastly, if we move to an area of more, say, dramatic cystic change, we can see that sometimes there is a significant inflammatory infiltrate, as well as significant hemorrhage in hemosiderin, and the hemosiderin tells you that the hemorrhage is real and not artifactual. Last but not least, and you can see this especially in these type of areas, we have scattered cells that look a little bit weird. For instance, there are some nuclear pseudo-inclusions, as well as cells that are enlarged with these smudgy, degenerative-appearing nuclei. This is an example of a schwannoma, a benign peripheral nerve sheath tumor that arises in the superficial soft tissues, most commonly the head and neck and extremities, but can also be seen in visceral locations as well as the CNS. The key feature of schwannomas are the mix of cellular Antony A areas and hypocellular degenerative Antony B areas. However, the most classic feature are the presence of varicae bodies, which are the areas of palisading shown here. Now that you've seen a classic example of schwannoma, I'm going to share some interesting variants I've come across during residency. This example, if you can't already tell from low power, is composed predominantly of Antony A areas, and varicae bodies can be seen throughout. Sometimes, varicae bodies can be so prominent they form what I like to call zebra stripes. I tend to see this pattern more frequently in CNS schwannomas. Cellular schwannomas are an important variant to recognize, since these have a largely fascicular arrangement and usually lack obvious nuclear palisading. I've heard different opinions on diagnosing these, but in general, these features should be diffusely present. This can matter clinically because cellular schwannomas are more likely to occur, especially if incompletely excised. Since I've given a lot of attention to more cellular examples, now I'll show some cases with interesting degenerative features. This schwannoma has prominent hyalinization, which makes it look like someone took a marker and outlined all the Antony A areas. This example has prominent myxoid change, and what's interesting is that it appears to involve the Antony A areas replacing the collagen in the varicate bodies. One variant I unfortunately don't have a great example of is epithelioid schwannoma, and these really do not look like schwannomas to me. They look like something balanocytic. The closest example I have is a schwannoma with small round cell morphology. You can still appreciate some subtle palisading or clumping together, but out of context, you could also call this growth nested or maybe corded, and that's the sort of pattern you see in epithelioid schwannomas. One more thing about epithelioid schwannomas is that about 40% are SMARC-B1 deficient and demonstrate loss of INI1 on immunohistochemistry. This is also seen in about 70% of epithelioid malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors. Although most epithelioid schwannomas are clinically and morphologically benign, a few atypical reported cases 
suggests that these entities represent two ends of a spectrum. And that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe. I promise you won't have to wait as long for the next video.